All right. Good morning. Good morning. If you're just randomly at all finding this channel by accident, so you know who I am. My name is Vincent. And uh, my wife and I have a ministry called Frontline Ministries. We're called to get the gospel to people and get the good news out. Our heart is and our commission and our life uh, goal and vision and assignment is to see six million oaks of righteousness grow up around the world so as to seriously greater the earth. We believe that, and we know because God spoke it, that we're to be a part, and we're just one of many, <clears throat> but we're doing our part, giving birth to a generation that he called the rising, the rising generation, the rise above the rest to the upper crust of society, like Daniel, even in the wicked uh, 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 empire of Babylon, and in, in, in captivity, and all surrounded by all sorts of pagan things, rose to the upper crust of society and seriously impacted the world. David's ministry, uh, excuse me, Daniel's ministry had a huge impact around the world. And um, so we believe the gods were part of giving birth to the rising. It's a rising generation. It will take them decades to grow up, but we're to reach them, get the gospel to them, and then help them grow. Amen. And so we have two channels. We have this channel is called the Jesus Tours because we go around and we go from city to city and town to town. And our heart and is to empower people and raise up, help raise up the army of God that will go that goes out on purpose, gets the gospel to people, gets the good news out outside the four walls of the church, into neighborhoods where the people are at. And specifically where the kids are at. Praise God. I grew up in a single mother home. In a tiny little town in Canada. And um, somehow the gospel got to me. And I'm so thankful I got saved when I was seven years old. Six or seven. And uh, I messed up lots over, you know, throughout my teenage years. But then at 20, 21 years old on fire for God and never went back and God touched my life and put a call on my life and my wife is the same grew up in a t not even in a town out in the country here in New Mexico where we're at right now and God found her and so our heart is, and we know there are kids all over to the ends of the earth that the gospel has to get to them and to get to them somebody actually has to have the anointing to go do it the passion the vision to go do it and they need to go and so we go everywhere. We travel everywhere. That's why it's called the Jesus Tours. We're going around, mobilizing people, activating people to go. Amen. Because it's not only us. The work is great. So this channel, the Jesus Tours, is to empower those uh, that have that have a desire to be used of God. And, and then specifically those who are in this lane to encourage you. Praise God. So if you're finding this. For the first time or you're just coming to get some encouragement that's the vision amen and it's important and it's powerful and it's of god and i want to tell you don't quit and then we create a jesus world which is a little more geared towards kids because what we want to reach the kids but then uh god said he's going to draw the young people but they're going to need to be taught and he told us be open to the lord so we're open to him we're doing everything we can and the commitment is a long-term commitment. The kids need to be reached, and then they need to be taught. They need to be grown. And that channel also, if you're in children's ministry, outreach ministry, whatever, it can be used in your preschool class. It can be used in your kids' classes. It can be used to help train um, your, your leaders or give them ideas, songs, uh, all sorts of stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're just finding me, honored that you're here. Now, today's going to be powerful. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the importance of wisdom. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to open up this word. And I love the word of God. This word is alive. And I need wisdom and you need wisdom. What God has called us to do is great. Um, in 1 Chronicles, uh, near the end, David is passing the baton over to his son Solomon. And he's saying, you know, I uh, there's this great task to be done, and it's the building of the temple. And Solomon is going to need wisdom and understanding. And so we are called to do great things to in building the temple of God, which is the church of Jesus, which is the, the people of God, which is the body of Christ, which is exactly what I just talked about. It's getting the gospel to them and then helping them grow into oaks of righteousness, which is which are which are mature, established, powerful men and women of God who actually carry the, the, the kingdom of God and advance the kingdom of God and influence all realms of society. Praise God. That's our call. And to do this great task, we're in the same boat as Solomon was. We need help. In First Chronicles chapter 29, after David says he's going to give this to Solomon and he encourages him, he says, Furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great. And so we have a great task ahead of us, and we need wisdom. So what we're going to do is I want to I want to just read scriptures because I want to give honor where honor is due. And if you if you know how to receive this, then it will be a, this is going to be a very powerful broadcast for you. And it's going to be powerful for me. I'm going to just enjoy the presence of God. But what happens is when you honor the word of God, God manifests. So even right now, if you just rest right now in the presence of God, I believe that the wisdom of God is manifesting himself for you. And what is wisdom? There's plenty of different uh, definitions, and I'm not going to try and break it down into a hundred different things. What we want today is the manifestation of wisdom. As we read, and, and specifically the wisdom to build. You know, if you're building a house, there's a specific order of things. The way things have to be done for that house to be built, built well. And that takes this thing called wisdom. So I'm, not, I'm just going to give you one definition of wisdom because I don't want to just teach on that. We actually want to experience God's wisdom. So what we're going to do is we're going to read the word and the word is alive. And so as we read it, that anointing, if you're just open today, the anointing of wisdom to build will be present and there'll be an impartation from God himself. That's what I need today. I need it. So whatever you're called to build, whether it's your, your house, your family, a business, a ministry, the anointing is present. The wisdom is going to be present today. As we just read God's, uh, read God. I don't know how to explain it. But just open up your heart and receive, okay? What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and follow the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding of God's ways. Wow, so good. Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and follow the best course of action. What is the best course of action? It's to have a profitable outcome or a good outcome based on knowledge and understanding of God's ways. Praise God. So we want wisdom. I already said it, but it takes wisdom to build a house. So maybe I'll just start with those scriptures. It takes wisdom to, there's a certain order to do things correctly. Amen. So Father, thank you for your word today. God, you've called us to do great things. Lord, we honor your word today. I'm asking you to manifest yourself today. Impartation of wisdom today. And I pray for anybody and everybody watching, you know what they have need of. And I thank you that a wise man is strong. 
that as there's an impartation of wisdom today, there's also an impartation of strength. What I see is it's kind of like um, concrete being poured into a foundation. Even as we just sit and listen, you're not listening to a man. Listen for the word of God. I'm giving honor to the word of God. I'm going to be reading a lot of scriptures today. And so God loves that. He loves when his word is honored, and so he manifests. So if you just receive today, there's an impartation of wisdom, but with wisdom there's strength. So, Lord, we honor your word. As we read your word, Father, I'm asking you manifest your spirit. Pour out your spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of you, Lord. Your ways, Lord. Sensitivity to your word, Lord. The next steps, each of us have something that we're, we're putting our hand to, Lord. What is the next step? Help us see the big picture. Help us to see the little details. Help us know what we need to know, Lord, to do your work. It's your work. And so we ask you for wisdom. You said in James 1, if we'd ask, we'd receive it. You'd give it. And so I thank you for it. God, I love you. I thank you. I thank you. We love you. We love you. We love your word. Love your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Proverbs 24. I'll just read this. It says, though, through verse 3, through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So through wisdom a house is built. Praise God. Then what I just prayed and I just said, verse 5, a wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. By wise counsel, you'll wage your own war. In a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Hallelujah. Verse 10, look, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So if you're fainting in the day of adversity, there's a lack of strength. And if there's a lack of strength, there's a lack of wisdom. And so today we're receiving wisdom. Just say, I'm receiving wisdom. And I know right now the anointing God is present. God is present right there. Just receive. You don't, I'm, not, I'm not talking about a feeling. Just receive. <laughs> Even now he's imparting wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say, I'll know what to do. Just say that. I'll know exactly what to do in Jesus' name. How can I say that? Okay, let's keep looking at scriptures, okay? Through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. Go to James chapter 1. I said we're going to give the word honor. And because it's worthy of it, and when you honor the word, then the word comes alive. The word does what it does, which is it's a living word. So we're honoring that this word is alive. We're not reading a dead book. And we're not reading it with our own head knowledge we're reading it honoring that it is god and it is the wisdom of god and so it will come alive james chapter 1 said verse 5 if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of god who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him so if you ask god we've already asked god for wisdom okay god then he's giving it he said he would so he is Praise God, he's already doing it right now. I'm not talking about a feeling, and I'm not necessarily talking about your understanding it right away. You don't, you might not see it right away, but there's an impartation of wisdom. Wisdom is a spirit. We'll go there next because I already prayed that too, but it's also that to you. But here, James chapter one, if you lack wisdom, ask, and he will give it liberally without reproach. That means without fault finding. God is a giver. He wants to help you. And then verse 6, let him ask in faith with no doubting. So believe that he gives it to you. And then as he shows you what to do, then you just have to trust. Okay, that's God. How do I know it's God? Okay, so Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith, and this is the Apostle Paul praying a prayer for the Ephesian church. And you can pray this prayer for yourself. Uh, Kenneth Hagin taught many of us, 
pray this prayer every day. He prayed it for himself. He prayed it for his family. He prayed it, and I pray this for myself. I pray for my family. I pray for almost every person. Whenever I pray for anybody, it's a powerful prayer. So you can pray this prayer for yourself. Verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So there's, the, there's a spirit of wisdom and revelation Woo, in the knowledge of him. And it goes into all sorts of powerful things here, and which isn't really my teaching, so I'm not going to read through it. But pray that you could pray this prayer, this whole prayer. You, could, you read through the whole thing. I'll just read it so you see what I'm talking about. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Hallelujah. So it's, it's an enlightenment. Like when the lights come on, you can see. When the lights are off, you can look as hard as you want with your eyes and you can't see anything. But as soon as the lights come on, everything becomes clear. And that comes from the spirit. It's not you, your brain. It's the spirit of God illuminating things in your spirit. Hallelujah. And then your mind catches up eventually and your mind processes and your mind takes time to get all that stuff straight. But it's the spirit. It's a spirit. Praise God. That you may know. So there's a knowledge. That kind of knowledge is strengthening. And it's establishing. Becomes an anchor for your soul. I know certain things in my spirit. You can know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working <coughs> excuse me, of his mighty power, he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So that whole prayer is powerful. The only thing I wanted to show you, though, is just that wisdom is a, there's a spirit of wisdom. Amen. Okay, now go to Luke chapter 6. Excuse me. Luke 6. Say, I need wisdom. Say, God has it for me. Oh, I love you, Lord. And just receive it. It's like a bath. It's like right now you're just bathing in the wisdom of God. And I'm going to read some other scriptures. And literally, whatever you read in the scriptures, if you're open to it, that manifests itself. For instance, if you're reading even in the book of in, a, in the book of um, Numbers, and it's going through and it's looking at numbers, there's an anointing for mathematical things. I've been reading through Chronicles, <coughs> and there's all these records of. Chief men, men of valor, mighty men, able men. And what I'm receiving in it is the anointing to be strong in the Lord, to be a soldier in his army, to be an officer in his army, a valiant man of God. Because I'm reading about it, then that anointing is present. So we're going to be reading, we're going to look at the wisdom of God in manifestation and so it's manifesting. It's like you're taking a bath in it. Now look at Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? So remember in James, we just read it. If you ask, in, you have to ask for wisdom, but you ask in faith, which means you believe it. What do I believe? If I've asked, he said he'll give it to me freely. Then after I've asked, then I have it. Praise God, it's in there. Might not be in my head yet, but it's in my spirit. And I'll know what to do and I'll know what to say. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I'll show you me's like, he's like a man building a house who dug deep, laid the foundation on the rock. 
when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. What are we talking about today? The importance of wisdom. And there, there's a wisdom to build. And so Jesus is giving us very simple blueprint of how to build something. First of all, you got to dig deep and and build it on the rock. What is the rock? It's Jesus. It's the word of God, the ways of God. <clears throat> Everything must be laid out according to his word. That means there's no cheating, stealing, killing, destroying, obviously. But there are ways of God. So we must we must be fall in love with the word of God. We must have a commitment to doing things in accordance with his word. But then I and I shared this a couple of teachings ago when I talked about becoming a student of your story. God will speak certain things specifically to you. And you have to make a choice to, to stick with what he has said, what you know that he's told you by the spirit of God. And everything that the spirit says is always going to line up with the word. But he has specific personal things that he'll speak to you like he could specifically prompt you impress you uh speak to you in a very clear way you're supposed to be a part of a certain local church and help a certain pastor well you need to be faithful to that that's a part of wisdom for you not for me i don't live in your city i don't i'm not assigned to that particular church but it's wisdom for you it wasn't written in this Bible. It doesn't say, you know, such and such church in such and such city in this Bible necessarily, unless you live in Damascus or something. But it, there's a certain word that he said to you, and that is wisdom for you. And so everything must be built on the rock, which is him, his ways, and his specific words that he said, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them. So hearing and doing are the two main things to wisdom. He said, if I'll do that, then I'll be building as if I'm a wise man. I don't have to be the smartest person in the world. And actually, God, God is pleased to do it this way instead of because there are smart people that are not doing things according to God's word. And those things will eventually tumble. But then there's others that are not so smart. But if we could learn to just hear his voice and just obey, then it's going to work. It will be as if we were a wise master builder, even if we're not that smart. Because who is smart? Him. And whatever he says, that's wisdom. So I don't have to know everything. Uh, it's good to know the big picture because that gives you the vision, what you're going toward. And then I just need to know my next step. Lord, what's the next step? Lord, what about this? And then he'll he'll help you. And he might have you research something in the natural. He might have you learn a certain thing. He might have you ask somebody who knows about that thing. But then by the spirit, you know, green light, red light. Yes, no. He might give you a word, a, a specific thing. And then, all, so all I need to do is hear and then do. The person who hears but doesn't do is like a foolish man who's built his house on the sand. And when the floods came, then great was the downfall of that thing. So that's not us. So there must be hearing and there must be doing. James chapter 1, if you lack wisdom, ask. And he will give it liberally. And then there must be doing. Once you know it's the will of God, then you have to do it. And then it works. If you're a hearer only and not a doer, then James 1 said you're, you deceive your own self. Things won't be working. And then you'll think that somehow God is failing or because you're a bad person or whatever. And it isn't. It's just we're not doing. So must be hearing, must be doing. Okay. Let's just keep looking at some other things. I quoted this scripture as well. So let me show it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul is talking. He said, verse 10, According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation, 
and another builds on it. Let each one take heed how he builds on it. So we're supposed to be taking heed how we build things. Everything that we're doing should be built according to the word of God and then led by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for everybody listening. Even now that you're they're in their particular situation, Lord, I believe you're quickening them. Lord, may we be sensitive to your voice. May we be sensitive to your wisdom. Amen. Okay, what I want to do is go and look at, well, I already talked about David. So let me just read a few more scriptures about that in 1 Chronicles. And I'll just show you this. This is so powerful. But in 1 Chronicles, David had in his heart to build the temple. And God said, no, you're not going to build it. But he did get the blueprint. Watch 1 Chronicles 28, verse 19. Said, all this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me all the works of these plans. Verse 12 said, the plans for all that he had. So verse 11, then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the vestibule, its houses, its treasuries, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, the place of the mercy seat, and the plans for all that he had by the Spirit. So he had a plan, and it was by the Spirit. The Spirit of God gave it to him. And he wrote it down. He said, the Lord made me understand in writing, verse 19, by his hand upon me, all the works of these plans. The cross reference says all the details. So God will give us all the details. He'll give us the blueprints. He'll help us to know exactly what to do by his spirit, just like he did for David. Uh, for, yes, for David. But then even David, after he said that, uh, then he, he made all the provisions for Solomon. And Solomon needed a lot of help. And he said, you're going to need wisdom and understanding. And then he, 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 he gives him encouragement. He says, be a strong and of good courage in verse 20 and do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed. And he says, and then, so he gives them all sorts of stuff. He gives them helpers. He makes provision, gives them courage, strength, prays for wisdom and understanding. So God will give us a blueprint. But then even once you have the blueprint, you're going to need the wisdom of God. Okay. Because for me, if I, if somebody gave me a blueprint for a house, <laughs> a literal physical house, I wouldn't know the first thing to do. But there are other people that know how. Okay, well, you start with this, do this. We're going to dig the foundation. Then we're going to lay the concrete. Then we're going to do this and that and that and this and the electrical and the plumbing and the walls and then the, the, the roof and the, the sheetrock and then the, the, the finishing touches and all that. The mirrors, the windows, the cabinets, the doors. There's a process to it. And so it takes the wisdom to do it, takes the understanding to do it, takes the strength to do it, takes the provision to do it. And here's some good news. This is a side note, but it's all there. If God has called you to something, then just like Solomon, I want to see yourself like Solomon today. If God's put out a blueprint, said, okay, this is what I want done. And even us, we're, we're putting out blueprints. When we're casting vision, we're telling you blueprints of what God wants done. And we need to be seeking whatever your part in it is. You need to be seeking the wisdom of God. Okay, God. And then you need to go by faith and believe. If it's really him, if you know it's him and it's of his word and it lines up with his word and it's his Holy Ghost is on it and he's called you and anointed you, then provision will be there. The help will be there. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. I want to read a little bit of Genesis chapter 1, and that's what I was talking about. I said, we're just going to read the word, and the anointing to build will manifest. Praise God. Genesis chapter 1, and I'll just read John chapter 1 while you're turning there. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, 
and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And it's talking about Jesus, but it's talking about God and it's talking about the word. All things were made through the word and without him, without God, without the word, nothing was made that was made. In him, in the word was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. Praise God. So the word, the word, the word, the word. If I need wisdom, the word has all wisdom in it. The word is the wisdom of God. The word, the, this word is alive. When you go into this book, know that it's a rock. Know that it's right. Know that it it, 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 it will quicken you. It knows everything about you. It knows the Spirit of God and the Word of God are one. And they know you perfectly. They know your situation perfectly. They know what God has called you to. They know the right way. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God. I'll go and turn because we said we're going to honor the Word on purpose. Turn and look at it. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added to you wow seek first the kingdom of god that's the that's that's having a heart for god the advancement of his kingdom the advancement of the of king jesus but his righteousness are his ways of doing and being right his ways the ways of wisdom there are ways that work and her ways that don't work. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, he said, wisdom has the advantage of giving success. If you know how to put a door upright with the, the hinges correctly and you know how to balance it and you know how to, the process of let's do this first, put the screws in here first, put this in first, you know how to do it right, you can do it well and it will work right. Somebody who's less experienced, like me, you tell me to, to put up a door, well, it, it's probably going to take me longer. I, I might possibly, if I'm not praying and really focusing, I'm, I could hurt myself. Uh, I might have to take it in and out a couple times. I'm going to leave extra holes because I didn't have it at the right place. I'm, I might have to go buy a tool because I didn't know that I'm going to need this. And then I'm going to, if I don't need, so it's going to take me longer, cost me more, and probably not end up as nice and straight and perfect and working right as somebody who know who's done it many times been taught knows the the physics of it the gravity the laws the correct tools and all that they'll be faster quicker cost less and it'll work better wisdom has the advantage of giving success so it's good to have the heart for god but then there are certain ways that simply work better you could have the right heart and it still might be working because you're just not doing it right. And that goes for all of us. And so we want to always be seeking, okay, God, your kingdom. May I always have the right heart. May I not be not walking in selfishness, vainglory, uh, uh, lust for other things, what those things. But then, Lord, show me your ways. Show me a better way. How can I be more effective? How can I be more efficient? Wisdom has the advantage of, of giving success. Wisdom imparts strength. Praise God. So in the beginning was the word. So you have to know that what, if you're talking about wisdom, the word is the rock. The word is number one. And, it, and, and it's the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the one here to lead and guide us into all the truth. So it's not getting head knowledge. It's yeah, it's going to affect my head, but it's the spirit. Praise God. Amen. All right. So let's read a bit of Genesis chapter one. And what is Genesis chapter one? It's God taking, it's going to start out with a void, confusion, something without form, um, and then he's going to he's going to by the wisdom of God, by the word of God, by the spirit of God, by the power of God. He's going to step by step build something amazing. 
And most of us probably know this scripture. But what we're going to do is we're going to read it on purpose with the desire and the openness. Jesus said, if you're hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you'll be filled. So if today you're hungry for this wisdom, you're saying, God, the work that you've given me, that you called me to is great. I need this wisdom. Then let's just listen to the word. And what's happening is as we, as we just read this word, then the very wisdom that he operated in, this is a record of him operating in the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God in perfect operation, building the most, the most amazing thing ever. This universe, this planet, the Garden of Eden, the, the man and woman. That very wisdom is right here alive, available to us as we read. So surely it can help you build a house. It can help you fix a car. It can help you with your marriage. It can help you with your business, your ministry, your career, whatever you have need of. Your body, building muscles, whatever it is you have need of. Praise God. So thank you, Lord. So I'm just going to read this chapter and, uh, and just receive. Father, thank you for wisdom and operation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. The earth was, was, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was ho hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light that it was good. God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. The darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you read through. Uh, people read through Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and if you're like me, sometimes you just kind of skip through it. But those those uh, those chapters on the building of the the tabernacle and all that thing is just filled with the wisdom of God. It's the filled with the anointing of wisdom, the anointing for excellence. And so we need to just read those things by faith and just receive. Okay, okay, I honor that wisdom. I honor this, Lord. And uh, then we become, because you honor that spirit, you're just watching God create. You're saying, wow, God, that's amazing. You honor that spirit, and then that spirit can come inside of you. You're honoring the spirit of wisdom. Wow, God. Wow, there was a process, God. Wow, you did it in order. Wow, it turned out good. And because you're in awe of that spirit, his spirit, then you're reverencing his spirit. Then you become sensitive to his spirit. And then his spirit can talk and you will listen and you will hear and you will heed and you'll operate in the same spirit. Thank you, Lord. Verse 6, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so. So it worked. God called the firmament heaven. The evening and the morning were the second day. There's a perfect order. God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear. It was so. God called the dry land earth. The gathering together of the waters he called seas. God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb. They yield seed, the fruit. They yield seed, fruit according to its kind. Whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. The earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind. The tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Father, thank you for wisdom to build churches. Wisdom. To, to lead our families, Lord. Wisdom for our businesses, God. Wisdom to build amazing things for your kingdom, Lord. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and seasons, for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens 
to give light on the earth. It was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night to divide the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the face of the, earth, uh, the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters in the seas. Let birds multiply in the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature, according to its kind, cattle, creeping thing, beasts of the earth, according to its kind. And it was so. God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. God saw it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Ha, 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 over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Hallelujah. So good. So good. So God, so <clears throat> Adam and Eve would operate under that same spirit. They were created to flow in that same anointing and do certain things. And the whole thing would flow because, because of God's order. It works. He had it all set up for them. Same thing for you and me. It's already all set up. We just have to flow in the authority that he's given us, in the lane that he's given us, in the grace that he's given us, in the task that he's given us. You don't have to do anything else but what he's tasked you to do. And it will work. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. That doesn't mean everything happens for a reason and everything. No, it, it all works together if you're flowing with him in his heart and in his ways. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God said, bless, God bless them. So they're all perfect order. He's anointing them now. He's empowering them now. He's authorizing them in a certain lane. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish, the sea, over the birds, of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it will be food for you also to every beast of the earth to every bird of the air everything that creeps on the earth in which there's life i've given every green herb for food it was so god saw everything that he had made indeed it was very good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day thank you Lord. god we marvel at your goodness we're like the psalmist god you're great and greatly to be praised you are so wonderful there is none like you. God, we honor you. We honor you, King of glory. Great and awesome, wise one. We love you, Lord. Father, we love you. You're so good. Lord, the task that you've given us is great. I thank you, Father, that your grace is sufficient. Lord, we ask you today for wisdom, and we believe that we receive it. Wisdom to do what you call us to do. Lord, we offer these bodies a living sacrifice to you. These hands, offer your body. Offer these hands to putting your hand to the plow, doing what he's given you to do with all your heart and according to his ways and according to his leading. Lord, we'll do it. Strengthen us by your spirit on the inner man that Christ may dwell on earth by faith. Lead us by your spirit, Lord. May we love you more and more and more and more and more and more and more. May we operate in greater strength and boldness, Lord. May many, 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 many lives be touched. May your uh, will and purposes be done on the earth, Lord. I pray for everybody watching, Lord. You know where they're at. You know what you've tasked them to do, Lord. Thank you for your grace. 
your anointing, your, your grace is sufficient for them. Thank you for wisdom, impartation, strength, uh, uh, encouragement. In Jesus' name, amen. You are called, you're anointed. Go in the strength of God today. Bless you. See you next time.